And Brandon, let's move on into the next team. This is a team that we're not used to talking about this low into the standings, and that would be the Michigan State Spartans. And this one, we're just going to get right into it because I think the starting point's easy here. Is this a team in 2017 in the Michigan State Spartans that gets back up into the echelon of Penn State, Ohio State, and Michigan and battles for one of the top three spots in the East, or do we see them below those three teams and kind of battling it out with the Maryland's and the Indianers to kind of fight for who's going to be below them? Well, I want to start off with what the heck happened last year? What the heck happened? I mean, they could not, mm-hmm. could not for the life of them, win any games. They could shocking. I like, mean, they won and we, three. And we were they high. won three whoopty. And we dude. were high on them last year. We were very high on them last year coming in. We thought, hey, you know what? This was going to be the team that could battle one of those teams. And it was just to what I saw is for the last few years, and I'm going back right now, like you look from 2013. On, yeah, really from 2013, it was Connor Cook. It was Connor Cook. Then it was Connor Cook to where when we got to Tyler O'Connor, it was to me one of those things where I looked at it and went, yeah, he's no Connor Cook. And that was the big thing that this team was missing was that quarterback that was like Connor Cook that they had the year before. Because, I mean, Tyler O'Connor didn't have a terrible year. I mean, 16 to 9, you're like, man, that's okay. But for a guy who is supposed to be one of the ones that really set up this team and, hey, you're my upperclassman, that's just not acceptable to be under 2,000 yards and only have 16 touchdowns, 9 interceptions. Well, I I remember... The game, it, it was Saturday, September 24th. Oh, he remembers the date. They played against Wisconsin because I was at the Notre Dame game. Okay. They played Duke. They lost to Duke. It was very embarrassing. Um, but I remember looking up at that scoreboard that would have the scores mm-hmm. of the games coming through, and Wisconsin's up, and Wisconsin's up big, and, 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 and then it's 30 to 6, and I'm like, I thought mm-hmm. MSU's up 36, and I yeah. see, I'm like, no way. Wisconsin's up 30 to 6. And right from that point, because Michigan State had been 2 0, they mm-hmm. beat Furman handily. They beat Notre Dame in a close one, but they still played well and ended up taking that one from, from Notre Dame. And obviously, Notre Dame turned out to be a bad team last year. Mm-hmm. So did Michigan State. Um, but uh, I couldn't believe it. And that was the beginning of a terrible, terrible season for them. They did not win again until they 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 beat Rutgers forty nine well, to nothing. But here's the thing, and it comes from the quarterback play, though. That's what uh, I look at. Nah, I look, no, if they You're had ru- a better quarterback, maybe they would have won a few more. I'm not saying yeah, they go to the college yeah, football playoff. Yeah, maybe. But they're not one win in the conference. No, they're not one win in the conference. But I, I think let's let's just take a look here, mm-hmm. real quick. They gave up thirty points to Wisconsin. They gave up. 31 to BYU. They gave up 54 to Northwestern, 32 to Michigan, 31 to Illinois, 45 to Penn State. Their defense was bad. Their defense was not good. It was inconsistent. It was terrible for the Mm -hmm. most part. And I think that it's pretty simple to be able to talk and say they were awful. They only had 11 sacks on the season. They had a seven-game stretch where they had two sacks total in those seven games. And they had 37 two years ago. This is a defense that's far removed from what that was two years ago. Um, However, this year the defense is loaded with veterans. It's loaded with returning talent. And it should be much better. But they've got to be consistent they've got to be consistent and they are going to win more games if they can limit these points Mm -hmm. you're right i think they need to be able to have a quarterback 
that they can say, that guy's my quarterback, he's my starter, that's the guy who's going to be going through all these games. But at the same time, you can put up a lot of points, but if you have nobody to come out and defend, you have nobody to stop opposing offenses like Ohio State's and Michigan's and Penn State's, you're, you're SOL. You are not going to win. You're not going to be able to keep up with them at the high-flying offensive level that they're at most of the time in games. You're not going to do it. And I think that for Michigan State to get back to some consistency, you know, hell, if you get to 20 sacks, if you get to 25 sacks on the season, certainly better than last year, certainly better than last year. If, you're, if your secondary can be able to get some more interceptions, break up more passes, if your front seven can get some pass rush, you know, if your linebackers can get more involved as well too, that's all going to be so helpful for your defense. And it's going to hopefully transition from game to game instead of, you know, two games at the beginning of the season mm -hmm. where your defense played well and then two games throughout the next nine, ten ball games where they play pretty well. I mean, after those first two games where they won, Indiana, they lost in overtime. Okay. You know, defense wasn't bad. Michigan, their defense played okay. In Ohio State, their defense did play well, but they lost 17-16, and that's where the offensive side of things, a quarterback, a consistent, solid quarterback, would have really been of good use there. Well, and one of the guys that I look at is Scott, the running back, and the reason why... I'm kind of looking at him was because since 2011, what have the Michigan State Spartans had on offense? They've had a running back. 2011, 2012, Le'Veon Bell. I, I think you've heard of him. He's doing some things in the NFL I hear these days. Um, after that, it was Jeremy Langford, a guy who, yeah, recently has been replaced by Jordan Howard on the Bears, but he was a guy that... I mean, solid backup to Leonard Fournette. Doing some things in the NFL, too, is what I'm trying to say. Not on the same level as Bell, but he's doing things, especially did things in college. And then it was the baton gets passed to Scott, which this will be his third season. And the thing I look at with the stats, and this is me trying to connect some dots and go with some trends, I look at last year for LJ Scott. 184 carries, 994 yards, six touchdowns on the ground. We look at Le'Veon Bell, the year before um, his last year, 2011. 948 yards on 182 attempts. He had 13 touchdowns that year. So a little bit more touchdowns, less yards, around the same amount of carries. That next year catapulted, double the workload, almost a 2,000-yard rusher, was just over 200 yards shy from a 2,000-yard rushing season, 12 touchdowns on the ground. Jeremy Langford, of course, the, this was uh, junior into senior year for him. He was the workload right away. When he stepped in junior season, 1,000-yard rusher, 1,400 in year one, 1,500 in Year two, 18 touchdowns, 22 touchdowns. He really didn't have that year to kind of say, well, wow, that was my year. This is the one I'm going to build off of. I think what Scott can do with this being his third year could have that build year like Le'Veon Bell did. The numbers were very similar. Same amount of carries, similar amount of yards. Le'Veon had more touchdowns. If Scott can show that same progression – that Le'Veon did, that I think can help this Michigan State offense get back to where I'm not saying that they're going to compete with Ohio State again or Michigan or Penn State. Those are clearly the top three in this division, and those are the ones we're going to be talking about college football playoff with. But I think if Scott, he's the key to me, if he can have a good season, then I might be talking like, okay, they could be the fourth best in this division at the worst. At the worst. 
Yeah, I think you're right. I, I think, you know, going back to t- talking about scoring, mm-hmm. um, in 2014, they scored on... They, they scored 72% of the time when they got inside the 30, 2014. And that was Jeremy Lang... Or, yeah, that was Langford's senior season, so his second year. 2015, it went down just a little bit, just mm-hmm. a tick, 69% scoring inside the 30. But then this past year, 57% of the time that they were inside the 30 did they score. And that's not good. And nine of the 20... 20- 24 times came against Rutgers and Furman. And, uh, yeah, those aren't two very tough opponents. Here. But but what I want to say is that mm-hmm. they need to not turn the ball over. We talked about that at the top. You talked about um, with the touchdown-to-interception ratio. For Tyler O'Connor. You cannot turn the football over. As many times as they did last Mm -hmm. year. You also can't have as many penalties as they did last year. Michigan State had 77 penalties last year. Their opponents had 50. Michigan State, MSU opponents had 50 penalties. MSU had 77. They've got to cut down on that. It's ridiculous. That's killing you right there. You've got to be able to do better than that. You've got to be able to have a cleaner game than that. And you cannot turn the football over. Those two things, pair those two things together, and that's terrible. That's a recipe for no success at Mm -hmm. all. And another thing I wanted to point to is it was interesting as you were saying those stats about the percentages of them scoring because I'm looking at the running back position. I'm putting a microscope on that. And you mentioned 2014, and I go... Okay, that was Jeremy Langford's or twenty yeah twenty thirteen. That was Jeremy Langford's junior season. All right, twenty fourteen. It was this much. Oh yeah, yeah. That was a senior season. He had a little bit of a bump from junior to senior. Then it showed a dip from fourteen to fifteen. And I I just look at my computer and I go, L. J. Scott was a freshman. That's some big shoes to fill as a freshman. Coming right out of high school. So, oh, by the way, you got to fill a 22 um, touchdown back, over 1,500 yard back in Jeremy Langford, because Jeremy Langford was a beast with the Spartans. But we've seen improvement from his freshman to sophomore year. You like, and you even showed it. Oh, the percentage went up from 15 to 16. I think that percentage is going to go up again this year because I think that. Yeah, they've got Johnson wide receiver. You've got the quarterback coming in. But I think that this team offensively is going to ride or die on the running back position and being able to not just control the pace of the game, control the clock, but to control the tempo of this game and say, you know what, we're going to play by our pace. We're going to play by ours, and we're going to get back to that kind of smash mouth running the ball that we're used to from Michigan State teams. And I feel like they have to do that to open up some things for Lewerke and make sure that he can have an improved season this year because he's taken over for Tyler O'Connor and they can't afford him to have a, I'm going to say, step back year because they need him to get up to where they were with Connor Cook so that they can win some more games. And Brian Lewerke, actually in his first two seasons, redshirted. And he redshirted last year, Mm -hmm. got injured. And so now coming back from that injury, it's going to be interesting to see how he's able to play. But he's the young guy. He's a mobile quarterback. And you know what we've talked about with mobile quarterbacks. Have you been sticking with us throughout Mm -hmm. all of these previews thus far? Uh, Not not, not even counting the Big Ten. The mobile quarterbacks have seemed to Mm -hmm. do pretty well in college football. Mm -hmm. And that is what what we obviously – are focused on here, and that could be good for Michigan State. That could really, really help them. And you're talking about focus on this running game. If Lewerke is the guy that they end up going with, because they they do have uh, uh, Damian Terry, the veteran there as well. But I'm I'm thinking they probably want to go with Lewerke uh, to have that younger 
uh, mobile quarterback presence. But with him being able to run the football well, that could be and work in their favor as well. That it doesn't have to be, you don't have to rely so much on a guy who's, you know, going to be a only sit in the pocket and and, and throw. But I, I think that it will be very interesting how this happens and how this all plays out because they lost four of their top receivers from last year. Mm-hmm. And and a lot of times, you know, we're talking, oh, who's going to be throwing the receiver the football? But now we're talking, well, who's Lewerke going to be throwing the football to? I mean, I'm assuming that uh, Lewerke is going to be the guy that they want to probably go with. Mm-hmm. But who's he throwing to? You know, who who's going to be that core group that comes up and steps up and, and, and takes that next step for them so that MSU can take the next step and completely leave last year in the dust and really have a good season this year? And I'm going to say this. I think that this Michigan State Spartan team, and many people are going to be like, Ricky, you're crazy for saying this. I look at their schedule, and based off of what I see offensively, the weapons that they have, and me, my micro, my microscope on L.J. Scott for this season, I look at their schedule and I think there's a good chance they can start 4-0 and to start it and start 6-1 and over or 5-1 and overall. And the reason why I say that, Bowling Green, I think, is an easy win for them. I think that Bowling Green won't stand a chance against them. Western Michigan, they're a good team, but they don't have their commander-in-chief there anymore, head coach going over to... Minnesota. So how are they going to do with the new head coach? I don't think they're going to be able to they're not going to be able to stand up to power fives like they would last year when they had row the boat on their team. Notre Dame is a joke to me, so I'm going to give that to Michigan State. Unless Notre Dame comes out week one and surprises me, right now they're a joke to me and they're dumpster fire written all over them. And then Iowa, that's the game where people might say, well, Ricky, that's going to be a affordable opponent. The big thing with Iowa, and we'll get to them next week, but they don't have C.J. Beathard anymore. C.J. Beathard is now in the NFL. He's no longer on the Hawkeye roster. I look at if Lewerke in this offense can get going, they could win the first two games, play a good game against the Fighting Irish, and if they play really solid against Iowa, 4-0. Michigan, I'll give it to. I'll give it to the Wolverines. The Khakis are going to invite them into Ann Arbor and just spank them all up and down the floor. And then Minnesota on the road, like, that's a winnable game. Indiana, we're going to get to them later in this podcast. How are they going to do with a new head coach coming in? I like the schedule for the Spartan team, and the only reason I like it is because of the weapons and the new quarterback they have on offense this year. And I say new only because, like you said, he redshirted the first two years and redshirted with injury last year, so we really haven't got to see him with those weapons and him and kind of some promise on the offensive side. I like the schedule minus Ohio State, Michigan, and Penn State. Well, sure. Um, I think that Michigan State, they're not going to go 1-8 and eight in the conference this year. No. They're not going to go 3-9 and nine overall. What Michigan State really wants to do mm-hmm. is they want to be back in the top three, top four. And now will they do it this year? I think that they definitely can. I think a winning season for Michigan State this year is nine wins. Mm -hmm. That will be a successful season for them to get back to it and to be winning again, be competitive again, and win those games that they should be winning. And I think but to do that, though, it's going to require that defense Mm -hmm. making a big switcheroo from what it was last year. You really have to move on. You really have to move forward. And you really have to come up big in in these games this year. Uh, 11 sacks is not going to cut it. 77 penalties is not going to cut it. Turning the football over on the offensive side as much as they did, not going to cut it. They need to be able to come up in big spots defensively, offensively as well, but they've got to be able to be consistent, and they've got to be able to win the turnover margin in their games and for the season. And If they can do that, they will win those nine games, and they will be successful, and they will get a ball game, and they could even put themselves in position to be able to say, hmm, Michigan State's knocking on the door for a playoff spot. But it's only if they do those things. If they don't, it won't be a 3-9 and nine season, but it won't be a winning one. Yeah, I see them finishing I see them finishing behind the big three. Ohio State, Penn State, Michigan are clearly the favorites. I, I see them as the fourth best team in this division, and I think they're going to be one of the most improved teams 
not only in this division, but in this conference overall. And Michigan State fans are finally going to have something to cheer about again after a off season and kind of a year where they'll say, well, that was a hiccup year. We're just going to completely forget 2016 ever happened. But before I move it on to them and bring them into the conversation, Brandon, any, any, anything we missed when it came to the Spartans? I think we're anything good. Anything we missed is we're, we're now going to turn the conversation on to you guys. Let us know what you guys think. Will this Michigan State Spartan team be improved? What do you look at with this team to be the key to a successful season in 2017? And how excited are you for the Spartans in 2017? Let us know down below in the comment section. 